Joshua, Sarah, on behalf of the O'Neill family, on behalf of the Brown family, so welcome here today uh, to the Home Centre. Uh, we're so grateful to Pastor Brian and Anne for use of this building. And uh, as you know, St. Mark's Church is built inside at the moment, and we're just so grateful that they've accommodated us uh, on this day. We're also so glad that you're here, uh, and we're here to celebrate the life of Mary O'Neill. Uh, and that is our mandate, and that is what we intend to do, and that is what we are going to do in the Spirit of God and by the power of His love and grace in our lives. First Corinthians 15 says, This is how it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, but it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body, but it is raised in a spiritual body. There's a natural body, there's also a spiritual body. So it's written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first with the natural and after with the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second from heaven. As was the earthy man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we be, we have borne the likeness of the earthy man, this is powerful. So shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. And so we rejoice this day with Mary, with knowing where she is, and knowing, praise God, the likeness that she radiates with today. And this is our joy, and this is why we celebrate. Mary is at home with the Lord. Amen? Amen. She's never been as healthy as she is now. She's never been as beautiful or as radiant. She's with her Savior. We have much to celebrate to give thanks to God for. And so we're going to celebrate Mary's life, we're going to celebrate her family. We are naturally going to grieve and we're going to express loss and we're going to know that there's a journey ahead. We're also going to celebrate her faith, her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which was so strong and exemplary all the way through over the years. We want to celebrate her family and bless them. And we want to rejoice that Mary is at the best feast, even as we approach Christmas. Mary is at the best feast that anyone could ever imagine. So for those who are at a loss, for those who are mourning, for those who are grieving, for those who are watching us online, for those who are present here, we're going to pray. We're going to ask Jesus to be with us by his good spirit. We're going to ask the spirit of God to flow through this service, through all of the words, through the music, through all that happens today. Because Mary would want Jesus to be the center and Jesus to be glorified. And so that is our intent. So let's bow our heads as we pray. Dear Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, thank you that you are our way, our truth, and our life. Thank you that you are the resurrection and that you are the true life. So we make it our business to know you, the only true God. Lord, as we celebrate Mary's life, we pray for and bring you her family and friends. Comfort them, bless them, bring peace to them, one and all, we pray, Jesus. Lord, we pray for Joseph. We pray for Joshua. We pray for Sarah. We pray for the extended O'Neill family, the Brown family. We pray, Lord God, for friends and neighbours, that you would be comfort and peace to them at this time. We pray for your presence to abide within them, your love to strengthen them, and your hope to lead them on. Lord, bless this service today. Bless the people here today. Bless those watching online today. And Lord, please be at the centre of all that we say and all that we do. May it be for your renown and for the advancement of your kingdom. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're going to stay standing and we're going to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords.
Martin's going to call up. Uh, yes, Martin's going to leave you, of course. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 53 to 58. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, and the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and in the power of sin is the law. But well, thanks be to God, he gives us the victory <clears throat> through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Thank you. Ruth? shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The family should be time. Joseph and Joshua.
before God. Um, I'll do one thing. I, if Mary was here beside me, she would say this. Jesus is a lifter of the broken heart. So not the way you are others on the internet uh, today, I will say this. If you give your heart to Jesus and ask him into your life to become your Lord and Savior, he will save you. He will give you a hope in the future. It says if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in our hearts, we are saved. Repent of our sins. Mary was here, she said the same to you. And he's so faithful, his name is to be glorified. And that's all I can say. I thank everybody for coming today. I just want to honor Mary's life. She's in his presence now. And she used to host that song, I can only imagine. Well, she's there now. So I want to thank each one of us for just being here today. All I feel is peace. The pain is over. She's in the glory now. So how you here today who does not want his Savior, ask him into your life. Repent of your sins. Give, and he'll come in and he'll give you a new life. That's all I want to say.
nobody has a plan for your life. Maybe you haven't accepted that yet, but God has a plan for your life. Um, and they, far beyond, she decided to give her life to the Lord. After that, she was told she never had a son, and I'm blessed to be the only human on this earth and say that Mary and Teresa only loved my mother. She loved me, and I thought I was going to do this so many times for my child, but she finished the job. She trusted Sarah to take over from there. I said, my dad, we didn't get 24 hours out of this, and I'll get a cash break. No, not one day. Not one day, but this is not him. We're still being told the time to go to bed this week. We're still in pain. She said to me, she said, uh, Sarah says, you guys are going to show the slide to me if you go to bed. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, that one. My other mom was laughing. She had a sense of humor. She was telling people towards the end of her speech, she was pretty fat because she was on the brandy. And my mom didn't drink. But she would laugh. My mom smudged through the pain. My mom promised me she'd not ask me at my wedding. She did. In a private room, when no one was there, she stood up and she said, Hey, Samuel, I got some man on my wedding. That was my only prayer. I said to God, she didn't have a prayer for that. There's no pain, there's no suffering. And I'm glad she is in no pain. She has no more suffering. I'll continue on her legs. That God was good. That she was the only way. That she was pain and suffering. He can give you hope. So I believe that promise I was given to her over 20 years ago to preach the good news of Jesus Christ the Lord. So today I do like, I'm joined my mom and my aunt once again. Thank you for coming. Thank you for loving us. I want to thank my aunts for being just amazing support systems. I know my mom's no longer with us, but I have you guys. So my uncles who are amazing figures in my life, my friends, my cousins. I know we're not alone. And as my dad said, we're experiencing immeasurable peace right now. I want to thank the Lord for my mom's life and everything that she had today. Thank you so much. God bless.
just enjoy those last last days with you, the, you know, the love of our life. So praise God. There's so much more I can say about Mary. And um, I, I remember when she was married to Joe. And um, before she was married, uh, the Christmas before there was a, <coughs> excuse me, there was an engagement announcement made. And I was I was the one to make it. But I got the name wrong. Because I couldn't believe on Christmas Day, it was Joseph and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, John McDermott, who is with the Lord now, said, Don't worry, they're in a stable relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so they really found the nerves for me to do it. You know something? Mary, she just had that tenacity of spirit. And even though, you know, we, we haven't made contact in the last, just, just on conferences and whatever, over the last. 10, 15 years, you know, I, I just I just feel so privileged to be representative of her today and s to celebrate the life that we knew of Mary. Uh, but the life that we knew then, it's nothing compared to the life she's living now in the presence of Jesus. I love that verse that says, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come and sing on the Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy sorrow and mourning shall flee away. That's what our area is today. So we can rejoice and celebrate in that. Amen. God bless you all. Him. He came to God for his own, but his own did not receive him. 
that to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. See, children of God are the ones that receive the light, enjoy the light, are spoiled by the light, and are lit all lit up, not just at Christmas time, but all through the year, through tough times, through dark times, through challenging seasons. The children of the light are always lit up because of the light of Christ in them. John 8 verse 12 says, this is Jesus. I am the light of the world. If ever follows me, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The greatest light in Mary Leah's life was and is Jesus Christ. Mary's favorite light was and is Jesus Christ. Not even sickness or death could quench the light that Mary knew in Jesus. With Christ in her, she will and she is all lit up and ready to visit. The light of the great city near Jerusalem. It's not an amazing visit to see the lights that is that she's enjoying at this time. When Mary was getting out of the hospice, uh, got a call from Josh, and uh, she was going to be coming home, and it was great. And, and Josh had blessed his heart, he wanted to bless his mom, and knew how much he loved Christmas, and loved the Christmas tree, and he wanted to put it up, and he wanted to get new lights. He wanted his mom to go back home, he wanted to spoil her, he wanted to surprise her, and so he gives me a call, we go to the shops, and it was so lovely just to hear Joshua's heart and what he wanted to do, and there he was, and, and he didn't mind the effort, and he didn't mind the cost, none of that mattered, he just wanted to bless Mary, that's all he wanted to do. And you know, even as I was preparing this wee message, it just kept my heart right before the Lord, I was reminded of what Joshua did. I was reminded of the action of Christ, the true light, wanting to bless and spoil and surprise humanity, including Mary. He wanted Mary and you and me to enjoy his true light. And personal cost and effort didn't matter. It didn't matter. And you and I were more important to Jesus than even the pain of the cross. So he went to the cross on our behalf to pay the price for the light that we would always get to enjoy, that we would never ever have to walk in darkness or enjoy a drop life or a drop Christmas. What an amazing Savior we serve. Amen. And he's just so special in all of his ways. And we bless him and we rejoice in the light and we celebrate the light and we give glory to the light and we rejoice in the fact that Mary knew the light and got all of it up and praise the Lord is now overwhelmed by light for all of eternity. Brothers and sisters, the joy of the Lord is this, that what is offered to us is free. What is offered to us has no price. And, and the Lord will beseech us. You know, Paul said, I implore you, I beseech you to be reconciled with God. And, and the great thing about it is that we don't have to do anything. It's not down to our strength or our efforts. It's to do with the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that he has accomplished in our behalf. And us receiving that finished work and walking in it and, and coming before the Lord and asking him to forgive us of our sins and bow the knee to his origin. All of this gives us access to the light that will never fade and you'll never have to put a dime into a beer. All your life. It's absolutely powerful. We've mentioned Mary, we've mentioned Jesus. What about Joseph? Again, possibly a little bit. Joseph in the Christmas story is one of the main heroes of the Bible. He is one of the quietest, most humble men in the scriptures. He just got on with the business of providing for his family and caring. And I just thought, Joe, that was so apt a description of you as we approach Christmas time. And where you are, you're just one of the most humble men that I've ever met. You're one of the most gentle men that I've ever met. You just get on to the business behind the scenes of loving your wife, loving your son, now loving your daughter, blessing people and caring for people. We want to honor you today. We do. We bless the Lord. Thank you.
temple of the Lord in the tree of life. Joshua, we want to thank God to you. I want to thank God that we are prepared to come to be. Because our lives have been enriched by the fact that God blessed us with you. Yeah. And we know that you've been an amazing blessing to your mom and dad, as those were saying. But you know, praise the Lord, look, God has blessed you with a beautiful life. The future is rich. And there's so much that God has to store for you. He has yeah. so many levels. Uh, we're just delighted to be able to stand for you today. And I know this is a tough time, and I know this is a grieving time. But you know what? Honestly, I think Mary would do this good thing if you bother with this and did get on with all that God wants to purpose in through your life. And so we want to live our lives to the best of our ability, even to honor, not just the Lord in us, but to honor the memory of your mom and what she would want as regards to the things ahead. So we're here. It's a few days before Christmas. And in John 12, we find Jesus, and it's a few days before a massive national celebration in his time, it's Passover. And so, for those that might be wondering, even right now, as we draw this to a close, how do we pass over from darkness to light? How do we pass over from death to light? How do we pass over from shallow living to abundant life? When Jesus tells us, he always tells us. John 12, verse 3 to 5, then Jesus told them, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before the darkness overtakes you. And as I was reading this scripture, I was like, oh my goodness, the days that we're living in, and I'm not one of those people that, you know, is on kind of YouTube looking for those conspiracy theories. And I'm not kind of on that journey. But every day is a closer day to the Lord's return. And it would be silly for us not to at least understand the times and seasons that we're living in. And they're very strange. And, and, and Jesus is saying, walk by and have the light before darkness overtakes you. He's speaking to the people. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. But believe in the light by and have the light. So that you may become children of light. Brothers and sisters, forgive it, this sounds like a bit of a heavy hint today, but we know we were mandated by Mary to do the gospel today. Mary didn't want to focus on God more, she wanted to focus on Jesus. And, and it would be wrong to not at least offer this good news to every heart and soul in this place and everyone joining us online today. Because there's an open invitation to the light. The light has a name, his name is Jesus. And it's not exclusive to anyone, and it's not exclusive to the perfect. It's for the, it's for the normal, forgive me, the normal Jews. And, and God wants to bless us. And God wants to invite everyone of us in and to bless our lives in so many ways. And be with the light when you have the light, so you might become children of light. Mary loved the light, she enjoyed the light, she basked in the light, and Mary <coughs> is celebrating in the light forever. She wanted this service to be Christ centric. She wants us to tell you about Jesus, her lives, and the light of the world. I pray that you don't Mary's intention to trust us for this service. Lord, I want to thank you so much for this privilege of just being able to bring this for you. And Lord, I know that for our people that are feeling overwhelmed by darkness, depression, disappointment, grief, worldly, Lord, we want to rejoice that there is hope and there is light. And God, we want to even now, we want to reach out to the light of Jesus. So for those of us that know you, we pray, Lord God, that your light would shine just so strong right now in our hearts and minds as we go through this tough season of grieving and missing and loss. And Lord, for those who don't know you, to know that there is that open invitation to have the light turned on, and to recognize the worship of Jesus, repenting of our sins.
let's stand in this place and in the presence of the Lord to close and prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I want to thank you for the wonderful life of Mary O'Neill. I want to thank you for the great example that she has shown not only her family, but her neighbors and her friends and everyone, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord God, for the example of generosity, the example of hospitality, the example of looking out for others. We want to thank you, Lord God, for your amazing grace that's been so shown here today, Lord God, as we remember Mary. We want to thank you for your unfailing love and your eternal faithfulness. Lord, I want to thank you for Joe, for Josh, for the O'Neill family, for the Brown family. And we want to pray for them right now, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for your protection over them. We pray, God, for your continued blessing on their life, Lord God. We pray for your comfort and your strength into the days, the weeks, the months, and even the years ahead. Even now, I'm here, Mary, and just from Pastor Sean's words, don't forget to pray for those who don't get money. So, Lord, we pray for those who don't yet know your love and your grace and your salvation. And we pray that their hearts will be opened to all of the words that have been shared and to the life that has been lived and the example that Mary has shown and pointing the way to you, Jesus. And so we pray, God, that we will continue to know your love and your grace this day. Let's pray this prayer together. This is the Lord's Prayer. Jesus calls us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May the Lord God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. We are going to go from here now to take Mary's body to her final resting place in Palmerstown Cemetery. The family would love you all to join us for the communion service of the Palmerstown Cemetery. Thank you.